This episode is brought to you by Spider Farmer. Coupon code MrGrowit5 will get you a discount on their products. They have 2x2 two two and 2x4 two grow tank kits, which include nearly everything needed to get started growing. They come with a grow light, grow hangers, grow tent, ventilation system with speed controller, a timer, grow bags, a thermometer, hygrometer, and a trellis net. Check out their website at spider-farmer.com or search for them on Amazon. And don't forget to use the discount code MrGrowit5 for a discount on their products. What's up everybody, if you that don't know me, my name is Chris, AKA Mr. Grow It, and today I got a harvest video for you. Another successful run in the books. For those of you who haven't been following this grow series, I'll link the playlist with all seven episodes down in the description section below. I grew five plants this round. Let's start off with Chill Out OG, bred by me. I started this plant in a one gallon container with Fox Farm Ocean Forest soil and I added in some insect frass and alfalfa meal which ended up working out pretty good. Around day 17 is when I transplanted into a five gallon container and the first feeding came on day 37. I used Dutch Pro Nutrients, their full lineup, plus recharge and most of the time I was doing a full dose. I was mostly doing the feed water feed water technique that a lot of people do when they're growing with synthetic bottled nutrients but i monitor the ppm of the runoff so i'll use that number to determine whether or not i need to feed or not sometimes it went feed water water and then feed again and then for recharge end up being once every 10 to 14 days is when i added that in i also snuck in some organic amendments on day 28 of flower i top dressed some earth dust boost insect frass worm castings some Grokashi, which helps with the breakdown, and three cups of Fox Farm Ocean Forest soil. When I first planted into that five gallon container, I didn't have enough soil, so it was a little bit low. So I backfilled with those three cups of Fox Farm. And that soil, of course, does have nutrients in it. So I'm expecting that some of that nutrition is gonna help the plants in the flowering stage. Nice fade at the end as we came up towards harvest. Dense bud structure on this cultivar. Every single one of these plants that I've grown out has been a dense bud structure. And I ended up harvesting this plant on week nine. I've mentioned this in many other episodes in the past, but I'm just a small home grower. I grow personally for myself only. Sometimes I have friends that stop by in town and I'll gift it to them or family. But for the most part, I'm just going for myself. And I personally prefer to keep smaller plants and grow a variety of cultivars. My goal is really two to three ounces per plant dry weight. And on this particular plant, I yielded 3.25 ounces, which exceeded my goal a little bit. So I'm happy. Next up is this plant, Dead Ops OG. The details on this one are pretty much same as the Chill Out OG, which I just talked about. I started in a one gallon container with the same mix, transplanted into a five gallon container, and fed Dutch Pro Nutrient Line plus the recharge throughout the grow. For this particular plant, I did not sneak in that organic feeding like I did with the Chill Out OG. Lots of purple leaves on this one. Absolutely beautiful. And another plant with very dense nugs. I ended up harvesting this plant also on week 9. This plant yielded 2 ounces and that's all dry nugs. And I don't include any of the bottom buds, the larfy type buds. Although for this particular plant, the bottom buds were pretty dense. So not many larfy buds, which I typically put in my trim pile anyways. So 2 ounces, not bad for a small plant. That's what I'm aiming for. Let's move on to another Dead Ops OG. This one was grown fully with organic inputs. I did also start this plant in a one gallon container with the same Fox Farm Ocean Forest mix, insect frass and alfalfa meal. Transplanted on day 17, this time into a seven gallon container. I wanted to go with a little bit larger of a container for this particular plant since I am feeding it organic inputs. It just makes things a little bit easier being in a larger container using organic inputs. The first feeding was on day 38. I top dressed two cups of worm castings, one cup of Build-A-Soil Craft Blend, a third cup of Grokashi, and I watered that in with Recharge. I hooked up the Blue Mat auto watering system to this plant, and I'm using barley straw as the mulch layer. This auto watering system makes it so much easier. As the medium dries out, water will drip down onto the medium, keeping it at the same moisture level. I also added in some worms this time around. I got some worms from Uncle Jim's Worm Farm. I think a lot of you are familiar with Uncle Jim's. Either you've heard of them or have purchased worms from them in the past. This is my first time going through Uncle Jim's and I definitely had a good experience. I got some red wigglers and European night crawlers. The red wigglers went into my vermicompost bin and I just put in the European night crawlers into this seven gallon container. I thought I also put the red wigglers into the container as well, but I don't have that on my notes. On day five of flower, I did another top dressing. I did one cup of Build-A-Soil Craft Blend and worm castings. 
and actually did the same exact feeding on day 34 of flower as well. And that's all I did for feedings. So when growing with organic inputs, I could believe it's a little bit easier since you don't have to mix up nutrients on a weekly basis. Generally, you're just top dressing every 30 days. So for me, it definitely made things a little bit easier. Also, one more thing I did do is I watered in recharge on a bi-weekly basis. I ended up harvesting this plant on week eight and the final yield on this was 2.5 ounces. So I hit my goal on this one as well. Next up is Purple Frost Giant. This one was also grown with organic inputs. I started this plant in a four inch container using Fox Farm Ocean Forest mix that I talked about with the insect frass and alfalfa meal. And then it was actually in that container until day 26. So 26 days in this small four inch container. Yes, the plant was yellowing. I was actually waiting to get the DNA sex test results back to find out if the plant was male or not. I didn't want to put in the work to transplant that plant into another container if it was going to be male and I was going to kill it off anyways. Well, come to find out after the fact, it's a feminized seed, so definitely could have transplanted it a lot sooner. This one went into a seven gallon container and I did three feedings the same as I did with the Dead Ops OG, the one I just spoke about. I won't bore you by repeating myself since all of that was the same. This plant I ended up harvesting on week nine and in my notes, I actually don't have a dry weight on this. It was the last plant that I harvested. I weighed out all the other plants and I guess I didn't weigh this plant out. But if I had to guess, I think this would be the heaviest yielder of them all. It was the biggest plant out of them all. I'd have to guess three and a half to four ounces on this plant at the minimum. Could have actually been more. I'm happy with that. Last but not least, I have another purple frost giant. This one was treated very similar to the Chiloto G, which is the first plant I spoke about in this video. Although this one did start in a four inch container and I transplanted it into a five gallon container. I fitted Dutch Pro Nutrients, the full lineup, feed, water, feed, water technique. And I did sneak in organic inputs during flowering, just like I did with the Chiller OG. This is what the plant looked like shortly before harvesting. Not much of a fade besides the purpling on the top part of the plant. The bottom plant stayed pretty green. Some cultivars just don't fade like others do, which is perfectly fine. I harvested this plant on week nine and got 2.3 ounces on this plant. These plants were in drying for about 10 days. The dry conditions that I prefer are 60% relative humidity and getting as close to 60 degrees Fahrenheit as possible. Now for me in particular, I live in a very hot climate. The normal temperature in my household is about 75 degrees, upwards of 80 degrees Fahrenheit. And so getting down to 60 degrees Fahrenheit in my drying room is, is difficult. Typically I can get down to 70 degrees Fahrenheit but sometimes it creeps upwards of 75 degrees Fahrenheit. But yeah, the plants dried in about 10 days. Then they will put into jars for curing. And then I store them in my wine fridge, which is temperature controlled at 60 degrees Fahrenheit. Overall, I'm happy with the results. This should last me about six months, maybe even longer. It'll certainly last me until I complete my next grow. Don't want to run out of supply, that's for sure. Those dispensary prices can be outrageous. If you're new to growing cannabis, I wrote a book called Seven Steps to Grow Cannabis, which will guide you through your grow. It covers growing indoors using soil or cocoa and covers everything from the equipment, seeds, the different stages of growth, harvest, dry, cure. And the last chapter has a section on the top 12 problems that you could face in your garden. You can get the book on Amazon, just search for it, or I'll leave a link down in the YouTube description section below. If you enjoyed this video, click that thumbs up button. Also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll leave it at that. On the outro card here, the video on the left is another harvest video that I put out this year, and the video on the right is automatically generated by the YouTube algorithm. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next episode.